Well, hopefully the battery won't die. I don't know why the hell it's only showing half the battery. This thing's been on the charger for days. Um, anyway, I guess we could call this part two. This is the other part of the board that is now on the lathe. Um, essentially, this is a separate board. This one is the one that I said is um, a little difficult to deal with. Uh, it is possible, but... Uh, this board is built into this board as well as the PWM, which is what's over there. Um, so the one that I have on now, I pretty much just removed this board and it was connected through uh, one of these ones. I don't know which one. Uh, it's probably this one. Um, this is TCH ground 5 volt. So that's probably a tachometer. Then you have a bunch of other stuff over here. Um, if you do get one of the older models where it has the dual boards, um, I, I personally wouldn't throw this board out because you can use this board as a controller for the uh, incline motor. Oh, okay, here's where it came in before. Because um, this has both a 5 volt and a 9 volt. I'm not sure how many amps. But... Uh, you can use it's got enough amps to move the incline motor so you could use this and hook a switch up somewhere in here um, to use this for a motor control you could probably hook it up forward reverse uh, the same setup okay uh, let's set this aside as I said I'd show you how I have this wired once I get it wired so we'll start in here well, let's we'll start over here. Power wire, obviously, comes over, hooks into all this, just like on what we'll call part one. Um, I actually changed out the, sorry, changed out the fuse holder for something a little newer. Made a back plate for my electronics box. Um, both of these, I'm just gonna take, I'll probably take this up and stick it on the inside wall here. Just use some, uh, well, hell, I don't know where it went, but some of that foam padded double-sided tape. I just had a roll. Anyway, oh, here it is. So I'll use some of this and just stick this on this outside wall on the inside, though. And then I'll just take the um, transformer and set it up in there and probably put a piece of tape on the bottom just to keep it from... Um, vibrating around with that foam tape that actually gives it a little bit of a cushion so it's not going to get any of the vibration from the lathe or very little of it. Um, so essentially as I discussed on the first video the only thing different you hook up in here would be how you hook your motor up because you're going to be running your motor through well if you are running your motor through this reverse switch and so we'll just discuss the reverse switch and keep this short. Um, I actually added a piece of aluminum on the front of this because um, this one, I mean, it pulls out easy enough, but going in, it's. I didn't see Grizzly's factory aluminum, plus it had the big holes from the on buttons, and I needed something smaller, so uh, I'll probably clean it up somewhere down the road, make it a little more fancy maybe a piece of brass or something but for now this works uh, another thing I did is because I had the big holes I just cut some thin rubber and put it on the potentiometer so I'm not grounding these out um, I only have it on the top just to keep it even so my potentiometer is not at an angle uh, it's unnecessary on the top but if how these potentiometers are designed is they're designed to mount far enough away where they won't ground out but since there was the pre-existing hole and it's actually mounted to the front plate I had to put the rubber in there to make sure that it doesn't ground out so I just marked up on here because um, that's how it is if you do take this switch out and you take it out of like your front cover plate or something I'd at least put up on there because Sometimes they're a little confusing getting them to go back in the right direction. Um, I mean, the easiest way to know once you have it out is to put the knob on and twist it and see where your positions are. But I just wrote up just so that way I don't have to play around trying to 
troubleshoot where it's at because I've had to do that before, which made me feel kind of stupid. Um, so, uh, okay, so these are the power sides coming in. Um, the little zigzag shows, you know, this is the one in the box, so that's this side. The three boxes open on this side, and so on. Um, I'm not sure what I have, what color is coming in for power. Uh, it would be, okay, the red would be the power. So the red goes to the one, the black goes to the three. The other thing you have to make sure is it's got these little, I don't know if you can see that, but it's got this little uh, um, bridge in here. You got to make sure those are in both sides and make sure all your screws are tight or you'll end up with some funky running electronics. Um, when you come over to the other side, how this works is it's just essentially got some uh, connectors in there that change position. I think this one actually throws the connectors towards the back when you flip the switch the other way. The neutral centers them where they're not touching anything. And then you flip it to the reverse and it pushes them all the way back. Or pulls them all the way forward, whichever. Um, so you just run your, uh, your, we'll call it side A, your red off of your two, run it back, run your black off of your four, run it back. That would be your standard forward motion. To get the reverse motion, you go back here to the 10, and you, you know, this is just a jumper wire, so this black wraps around and comes back over to the two, and vice versa. The uh, 12 wraps around and comes over to the Sorry, the black comes over to the 4, so the 10 comes to the 4, and the 12 comes over to the 2. And what that does is, when you do flip that and it moves it to the other circuit, you got to have them crossed sides like that, because if you bring one from one side and one from the other side, you know, oh, I'm pushing buttons on my camera. So if you were to bring this and just put it in here and flip it to the other side, you would just get a forward motion again. So you have to have these two wires crossed over. So that's why you got to have, you know, the positive side come over to the negative and the negative side come over to the positive. And so that's, uh, that's the switch. I mean, there's really not that much to it. Um, my nice little motor mount job. I think it's nice, but, uh, let me, uh, let me flip some stuff on. Okay, so that's already on. And another thing I'm going to do, you know, like these little things here, I'll just run some electrical tape around anything that might potentially ground out. Um, that one, yeah, I'll probably wrap that one in tape too. Um, with this switch, it doesn't really matter uh, which one you plug it into. It's an open-closed switch, but if they're numbered, which this one is on the other side, you're usually best off just putting your input your input load into number one and then your output into number two. Um, this switch doesn't matter. The you know it's an open closed switch, so it doesn't really matter which way you hook it up. Um, oh yeah, that's right. We were we were playing with power. So I pull my power on. My light comes on. I engage a drive. Uh, direction and give my potentiometer a little turn that kicks on another light another little turn another light should start and we're running so that's all there is to it um, once you have everything set up I'd actually just uh, put this on the lowest level your if you have one sensor the speed sensor put it on the lowest level keep in mind when you do adjust these sensors your lowest speed also affects your highest speed so say you know say it's 100 rpms when it's bottomed out and you turn it up to 200 it could take your high speed from 1500 to 2000 rpms so you gotta check both uh both positions with that and just kind of um, find a happy medium i like this whole setup because once i have this other pulley back on i'll actually have six gear ratios although with this motor and the top gear ratio will probably never get touched. 
because I think it uh, it'd probably be spinning faster than these bearings can handle. So um, maybe that helps somebody. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe I'm just uh, barking into YouTube, but um, I don't have a potentiometer knob yet. I'm going to turn one as soon as I uh, apparently hand file my or hand scrape my carriage into um, into good enough shape that I can make a parting cut without uh, my lathe deciding it wants to try leaving the counter. So, um, yeah, so I went from all this crap back down to these three levers. I ditched my emergency button because if I slap that real hard, it will shut off. So, uh, that's, that's all I got for today. You guys have a good night.